about neutralization reactions, acid-base neutralization reactions. Well, uh, combustion reactions are typically a combustion of some hydrocarbon with oxygen that makes CO2 and water vapor. If the uh, material to be combusted is just hydrogen, then that reaction generates water only, no CO2 at all, since there's no carbon in any of the feedstocks for that reaction. Right here we have balloons that are filled with hydrogen. And uh, you know, as long as, in fact, in, with most gases, most uh, gases that can burn, there is what's called a lower and upper explosion limit for them. And uh, so for hydrogen, you have to have several percent of hydrogen in the air before you could set fire to it. And likewise, if you go above you know, 90 percent or so, you can't set fire to it. Here, once the balloons pop and they mix with air, then we have the ability to, to ignite it. But even if you were to pop all the balloons, uh, you wouldn't get uh, combustion, necessarily. Hydrogen plus oxygen would just sit there for the age of the universe with nothing happening, unless you ignite it in some way, so you introduce a spark. And uh, the reason for that is that for any chemical reaction to happen, now I want you to think about this, in order for any chemical reaction to happen, well, the definition of a chemical reaction is a rearrangement of chemical bonds. Right? So in order for that to happen, you have to break chemical bonds and remake other chemical bonds. Or you have to change the angles that molecules have within themselves. So the angle from one hydrogen to a carbon to a hydrogen, for example. You've got to change those angles. Something's got to change structurally for a chemical reaction to happen, or you wouldn't even recognize it as a chemical reaction. Right? If you mix two things together and you pull them apart and nothing has changed, most people wouldn't even call that a chemical reaction. Okay, so for those things to happen, bonds have to be taken out of their most comfortable bond length and bond angles. And that requires energy. If you don't put enough energy in to do that, then in most cases, chemical reactions won't occur. So there's an activation energy for almost all chemical reactions. And the reaction of hydrogen with oxygen, even though it's a very exothermic reaction, even though you, know, you hear people talking about using hydrogen to fuel cars and to fuel, you know, it's basically the, the power source of the future, that reaction doesn't happen spontaneously. It requires some sort of initiation. So even if we were to pop all the balloons here, uh, there wouldn't be uh, anything that happened, except that there'd be a little hydrogen in the air. And it would quickly be diluted enough that there wouldn't be any danger from it. Uh, but we're going to provide a little bit of ignition uh, for these. So before we get started, uh, what I'd like to do is to ask people here in the first three rows to please get up and step out into the aisles and kind of move up into the aisles and sit on the steps in the aisle. <laughs> He cares so much. Because he puts in so much work. I'm like, I'm like, I really like that you care so much. Can I take a bite of this? <laughs> Hydrogen plus oxygen. Very, very simple reaction. You can balance that in your sleep, practically. These balloons are filled with just hydrogen. We haven't added any oxygen to them. The oxygen is going to be used for this form of the air around the balloons. If we had added oxygen to these balloons, then the reaction would go quite differently. Uh, it would be a lot faster, for one thing. Louder and faster. And uh, it would all basically happen right there with a white flash. But without that oxygen added in there, then what's going to happen is you're going to see some dim flames, and you'll hear a roar, but it's 
not going to be as violent as you have with, with oxygen added to these, okay? Now, while I've got you sitting there, can you, ride, yeah, can you, uh, can, can you go, can you work your way up and, or, yeah, can you work your way up and, or you can sit on the, stand on the sides. It's okay to stand on the sides, too, until this is over. <laughs> Don't sit down and sit down. Can you just uh, sit over there or break your way down? I don't want to. All right, so uh, what, was I, what was I going to say? <coughs> yeah, we're not doing oxygen mixed with this. Um, but at the same time, I want to make sure that nobody's down here because you know some of the balloon might catch fire and it might be one of the latex that's a bit of a flaming latex All right, and... Uh, if you have your, uh, if you want laser pointers, I'm just kind of interested in seeing what happens when you light up all these white balloons with laser pointers from the audience. If you brought something, then pull out your laser pointer. I'm going to turn the lights down. There's some lights in the room that just will not turn off if you happen to have brought a laser pointer. Nobody brought a laser pointer. Wait, there's one. Oh, Two. I wish we could turn off all the lights here, but uh, the thing that's kind of neat about uh, about some of these balloons is that with why you get a lot of scattering inside. If we could get all the lights off, you can see. <laughs> okay, so while we're doing that, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Stefik to go ahead and do this demonstration. Yeah. <laughs>